Welcome to Nature of Sovereignty. Today, I have on my good friend, Bitcoin Vegan. Yes, you've seen him around the Bitcoin podcast circuit, but he's dropping a couple of exclusives here. Uh, we talk about bringing from bars to Bitcoin seminar to correctional facilities, teaching prisoners and returned citizens about financial literacy and Bitcoin adoption, and then also creating a pipeline from prisons to Bitcoin companies. This man, he's a visionary. So I hope you enjoyed this little kickback between me and Vegan, and hopefully you'll get a little insight on what's to come next from him. Enjoy. Welcome to the Nature of Sovereignty. Today I have on the author of From Bars to Bitcoin, and also BBB moderator and overall just educator and badass, Bitcoin Vegan. What's up, man? What's going on? What's going on, bro? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, so you definitely been around the circuit over the past couple of months all over the country, hitting up Texas, hitting up D.C., you know, in Florida. And uh, there's a lot of conversations. But had to get you on because we have some new information uh, today. And I know one of it is teaching Bitcoin uh, seminars at correctional facilities. So you, yeah. from bars to Bitcoin, you had your own story of how you came from the correctional facilities and learned about Bitcoin. And now it sounds like the next step here is that you're trying to pay it forward. Yes, sir. Uh, me, uh, Miss... Kim Booker, a few other people, um, I, I reached out and, you know, said I wanted to try something new. And, you know, I tried this idea in Miami um, and it was all about just trying to get in there and, and teach. So now the vision is like, you know, we're, we're we are to the point where we've had conversations with certain uh, state prisons or state uh, board of directors when it comes to prisons. Uh, there's a follow-up meeting in place as we speak and um within this i know i reached out to like a few companies to see like if they wanted to participate in this and so we are at the very last step of that we have our final meeting this month and the vision here is to go inside you know basically teach it, the real values the real principles what bitcoin really is and with uh, in the regards and also that, you know, doing some other seminars that are mixed in. But the ultimate vision is to, number one, go inside the prison and teach Bitcoin because more times than not, people sit in prison and they just wait for something dope. You know what I mean? You hope for, like, something life-changing. And nine times out of ten, when you come out of prison, like, it's not there. And so uh, within doing that, you will also be able to give a different layer of hope you know, I know a lot of people in prison, probably on different prison yards. Um, they they hear about Bitcoin. They might only think about it in some old scams way. And, um, you know, you want to relieve that fear. You want to relieve, you know, what that actually is and give true meaning as to what Bitcoin is. And then also, you know, gives someone legitimacy to see that, you know, someone else has walked this path. Someone has been able to, uh, you know, build their wealth off of it. And they, you know, start from a situation like me and um, that. The, so here's the great part. The incentive with Bitcoin would be for everybody to run and make money. You know, that's the crazy part about Bitcoin. It's incentive incentivize you to hold Bitcoin and go get more Bitcoin. But the true essence of it is, you know, decentralization and freedom. And so when I learned about Bitcoin myself, I um, the first thing that stood out to me was when Isaiah was speaking about you know, uh, decentralization, the freedom aspect, and how it was a, a coin outside of government control. Excuse me. And so, you know, um, more times than not, guys who come over prison, they are really open to something new if they can see how they can 100% be in control of it. Where does this freedom lie? How, how deep does this go? How can I participate? So the minute that, you know, the, the scenario is met, I mean, where the situation is met with like unadulterated freedom, it's almost like it's going to be just the orange peeling process. It's going to get them hooked, but then drives a different hunger. You know, this is where um, 
I'm going to find the article. It says recidivism imprisons American progress. And the fact that the, when, when most guys come home, they're not really met with something like that grand or that mm -hmm. life changing, or they're always late to the boat. They do late to the boat things. You go back to the environments, you, you know, you, you go back to the things you do. Like I talk about in my book, uh, going back, everybody who went back to prison went back to what they were doing. So Bitcoin uh, provides that hope and we'll be able to actually see what that kind of hope looks like when someone is actually walking out of prison with already present knowledge. Because if you got to go out into the world and, you know, hope to find something, there's so many distractions. You know, if you've been locked up three, five, 10, 15, 20 years, you can get distracted off anything. So if you're able to like, you know, place a barrier between that door and Bitcoin, they even show legitimacy like, damn, like this is really for real in here. You know, now you can start setting people on a different path. Right. Um, so to get further into the idea and the strategy of this, is uh, you know you will come into like one of the prisons and during a period maybe like a, is it like an hour hour and a half sort of seminar you sit down with the the prisoners you give a presentation teach them about what is a cold storage wallet why is it important to take it off the exchanges where do you start like the the principle of having a hard stored asset right uh, versus uh, fiat currency. So I, I'm just thinking, like, what would be like the first approach? Because like you can you can start anywhere when it comes to Bitcoin. But mm -hmm. uh, what is the starting place that is best uh, for the prisoners and would resonate the most for them? Well, number one, the starting place would have to be, you know, just as always, you got to meet someone where they are, and if mm -hmm. you know someone is in with inside a penitentiary, you know, what access would they be able to have to cold storage? You know, I mean, what access would they be able to have to, you know, some some stuff? I mean, you could get it. <laughs> you probably have to start with can't. like the phone. It's just like buy a Bitcoin off of, you know, mm -hmm. mobile wallets. But then, you know, like, so like the education mobile. would go out that far because, you know, you could educate people outside of, you know, the prisons about, hey, you know, I might need this or whatever, whatever, whatever. Or my fault. Or you could, you know, they can call a family member, say, hey, can you purchase a cold storage wallet? And then right. can you, you know they can set up some type of way to get the private me. keys. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or, I mean, they might have someone bring it in. Who knows? But uh, within there, the principle, the, the, where you start is off with the, where the principles are. You know what I mean? First of all, you meet them where they are. You know, so number one, you might have to go in and dig a little deep into, like, money beliefs. Right. You know what I mean? What is money? Yeah. Right. What is money? Why? Because I'm, you start off with saying most of you here with, because of money. Mm-hmm. You know, not knowing the value of money, not knowing the quality of money, just knowing how to touch it and spend it. So I think it would be good to start with, like, you know, knowing what, how money has not been working for you, how subconsciously wanting money has led you here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The way that the money works has led, the way that the one money subconsciously works and does not work has led you here. Because if you were yeah. holding on, if you were, like, more times than not, more people in the population, people will still commit crime. But if you were to have more people exposed to the true essence of a real money, you probably wouldn't have so many people sitting in prison behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, because so, that is constantly inflating right, <laughs> over time. Right. So, it's, and it's then that nature as well, not power. knowing about, you know, true things about money, you have, you do, do, you do crazy things like you come to prison over money that loses value. So you attach that level first. And then I would look at it as, you know, just going down the principles, like what can be done here? I know we're talking about going in probably a few hours out of, you know, two or three days, uh, you know, dealing with and then working with individuals who are a year or less coming home. So then, you know, they really have, you know, a bigger incentive to want to learn about it. And, you know, they'll be able to share information with everyone else. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'm starting at, it, starting at it that there's true freedom, you know, how it's separate, why that's valuable. Uh, why something to get into and how there's no barrier of entry. There's no one to tell you no. There's no one to say what you can or can't do. It's all based upon how much knowledge you want to put in. And then, you know, combine that with what you've already done. You know, how you're already used to a closed up economy, how you're already used to, uh, you know, like with stamps, you know, how you're already used to this decentralized type of money. Have you already Explain been that a little bit about the closed loop economy and the prison systems. 
So it's like, how does that work? (laughs) So it's like, you can't go nowhere else. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know, but like the the with the currency, what is mm-hmm. used as currency? I know you'd say like stamps, cigarettes, but how yeah. does that work? So like, so and, the main use would be stamps. Um, sometimes people bring stamps from different prisons. Sometimes someone just buys a lot of stamps. <clears throat> but what happens is um, those stamps, like sometimes you have stamps that stay on the yard forever, but they keep them on the yard so they can stay in circulation, and while they're in circulation you know, you can always use them in goods and services. I mean, well, pretty much you can use them for goods or whatever. Um, and services, really. So as long as there are stamps on the yard, there is money to be made on the yard. The minute their money dries up on the yard, then you go to some other currency. But, you know, some a lot of people, it's kind of like Bitcoin. Stamps was accepted anywhere. All right. Some people might not like certain chips. Some people might not like food. Some people might not like this. But everyone for the bad part of me being there except the stamps. So within that, everyone was already, you're already, you're already linked into a consensus mindset. You're linked into, um, you know, just really how to go about governing yourself and how you hold your money. So now you have a money that appreciates the value while doing that. So within that being placed, like I said before, a lot on a lot of episodes, once that, once you tap into something that someone has already done, and it can be applied to Bitcoin. It gives it an easier, um, it gives someone a little bit easier way, a path to get in to let them know they can participate. And, and once you were there, um, what was the extent of financial literacy uh, in the prison systems? Were well, none. There, no, there were none. <laughs> no, <anything>. none. <laughs> nobody was bringing you, not in North Carolina, nobody was going to bring mm-hmm. you there. They try to teach you behavioral things, how to sign up, how to sign a job application, but they'll never get to the real issue. Mm-hmm. What's the real issue? How do you keep money? How do you how do you grow wealth? That's why you're here in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody what I mean? broke down the monetary policies. Yeah, we're not, they're not <laughs> breaking the day. They're not okay. breaking down that. They might not even know how to do themselves. You know, mm-hmm. that's another thing. Like sometimes we might rely on people to do things they don't even do themselves. All right. No, what you're doing is completely groundbreaking and new. And I, I hope, you know, where whatever facility you start at, that's not the one and done deal. Like mm-hmm. after a couple of sessions there to, to spread it out throughout the country, because a lot of our returned citizens, they need that financial education. Because right. as you said, like the reason why people go to jail in the first place, like the the biggest reason is for money, mm-hmm. you know, it's the, it's the pursuit of money. And because there's no other options around you, okay, right. I'm going to go the illegitimate route because I don't have the applications, the job applications that can allow me to feed me and my family. I'm going to take a more riskier direction. Mm-hmm. That's how people get caught up. And so we we owe it to those people to teach, hey, how to make money, how to preserve your wealth the right way. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, <laughs> it's do it the right way. Because you'll go in circles for years and die in those circles going the wrong. Like that's mm-hmm. all it is. People going insane, not understanding how everyone is doing this. Mm-hmm. Like how's it because it is such a wealth gap, but you gotta think sometimes at one point in time the, the poor are gonna be like, yeah, what the hell is going on? Like, how are y'all getting this rich? How is everybody getting this much money? And you are. I read it was something that's crazy. I don't know how this makes any sense, but they said by 2053, the net black wealth will be zero. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> that mm-hmm. no, the average, sorry, black wealth of a family is going to be zero. I'm like, how is that? They're projecting us <laughs> yeah. to have nothing because like, if the pace stays only the same i mean they didn't they didn't project black bitcoin billionaires so it might nah, be zero yeah, percent still because we got most of the black wealth in bitcoin <laughs> however <laughs> yeah. however it's like if you stay on the path that you're project this is your projected path so if you change the projection you know what i mean but here's the thing like i've always said um it deals with like what you're investing in not like what made money in the past Mm-hmm. Like so, you got to change with the times. You really, you really, you really can't equate how much wealth that will be made in in those old ways of doing things because there won't be too much to give a boost. 
You know what I mean? Like Bitcoin's the only boost out there. It's the only it's the only thing that can help you play catch up. You know what I mean? So mm, like that's an important point. You can't play catch up. You can't play catch up in old markets. You can't play catch up in altcoins. You can't play catch up in none of that stuff. So Especially when it's already rigged against you. The people who've yeah. been in there for generations and generations, the nepotism who pass mm -hmm. the game plan, the blueprint to their children. So mm -hmm. they'll keep it with it amongst themselves mm -hmm. and not allowing access for us to really benefit from. Mm -hmm. So this is a open, transparent, new financial system that doesn't discriminate against anybody that doesn't right. have a, a inside group and an outside group you know people behind closed doors making deals mm -hmm. like the protocol is the protocol mm -hmm. and <laughs> that that being taught and and the system prison system and they're just like for any marginalized community any communities right. that have been unrightly treated by a central authority mm -hmm. like it's, it's it's for it's for all of us now I know that you had from bars to Bitcoin Clubhouse, and I was curious, you know, you've been doing this for a couple of months. Could you give me like one success story from a returned citizen that that you helped and what, what he's doing now? Um, so there are two guys, especially in there. Um, and I can't what I can say is that them coming in. One, his name is Todd. One is Beta. And they did a lot of work themselves before even coming in Black Bitcoin billionaires, uh, to mm -hmm. be quite honest with you. So we just added a layer of what was already working uh, with Bitcoin. And so um, the some of the results they've gotten is just really the the possible. Every time we're in there, they say, you know, I'm learning a lot of knowledge. I'm learning a lot of knowledge. And then they can actually, like, apply it to what they're doing. You no, know, there's one guy in there who was locked up about 30 years. And... You know, um, just them being there committed every single day learning is a is a success, you know, so we build on top of that. Um, I know I know one of them in this the nonprofit work. He's now, you know, spreading what Bitcoin is spreading in his community. Um, and so just it's, it'll be a process, though, you know, it'll be a process course, because. Yeah. Again, Bitcoin is all about proof of work. How much time, you know, how much time have you done or how much time have you put in? So it's not uh, a situation where there's going to be like this immediate. Well, I'm not saying it's not, but uh, for right now, them being in there every week, you know, learning about Bitcoin, listening to these high level terms, you know, just connecting different um, wires in the brain about what money is and what Bitcoin is in the future is doing enough in the background. It lets me know that it's working. Because you don't mm -hmm. keep coming back if you if you fall in, you know, bored. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, w when you think about it, even certain high level economists don't understand mm -hmm. Bitcoin and what it can provide for society. Because mm -hmm. those classrooms, when they got their MBAs, it was all about Keynesian economics. It was all about, oh, we have to have an inflation rate. We have to continue to print more money. Right. The Federal Reserve Bank is a needed institution. And right. without it, society would, would collapse. So they're coming with a certain knowledge. It's, it's one thing not having the information is another mm -hmm. thing being misinformed, the misinformation. Right. Because you really have to do double the work, double the effort to relearn. <laughs> right. <laughs> to, see, that's to, another to beauty, right? Because, mm -hmm. see, guys coming home, and men and women, people come home from prison. You have a lot of people who are very smart. Excuse me, damn. They're so smart. They don't have nothing to test it out on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this type of information that's been known for years, and you combine it with Bitcoin and, and with, with, you know, how consistent Bitcoin is, how, you know, the real focal point is you show what Bitcoin solves. You know what I mean? You show the problems Bitcoin solves and where they relate. Like he was talking about Keynesian economics or Alcine economics. I know these are terms that a lot of guys from prison have never heard, but they have to hear those. Like you just have to get thrown in there. So the best way to do it is to surround the brain with the knowledge and then you allow, you know, how it works to work. Because um, the one positive I can say is, you know, about Todd and Ubeta, they don't care nothing about altcoins. Like mm. they care nothing about altcoins. They see straight beauty in Bitcoin. They see the freedom that Bitcoin has. Just being able to buy it, just being able to hold it. You know, um, like one time, um, me and Ryan Lawrence, we broke down like how 
you know, when, when uh, one of the guys had gone to prison, they did 30 years, the dollar was worth a dollar when they were there. By the time they came out, the dollar was worth 85 cents. So, you know, I said, like, that's a detriment of not knowing about financial literacy, not knowing about the quality of money. You know, you, you put yourself in situations that really, you know, are mathematically designed not to make any sense. Mathematically, mathematics, you know, if you look at it, the Feds have a 98% success rate. Like, the, the, stop I'm trying to be that. Michael. You're trying to be Michael Jordan in the wrong game. You know what yeah. I mean? It's an experiment. You're trying to be Michael Jordan in the wrong game, man. And and not knowing that their money, where they're holding it, especially if it's just in a, a savings account, is on a, a melting ice cube, mm -hmm. right? A mm -hmm. Melting iceberg that's, you know, slowly losing its purchasing power. So that that's a powerful concept in itself. Once that sort of idea takes seed, right, and, and, and grows, uh, knowing the, the difference of, hey, my money tomorrow will actually be more valued than the money today because there's a fixed supply, right? And mm -hmm. because every... What, what do you say? Every two thousand blocks. Every two hundred and ten thousand blocks. Two hundred and ten thousand blocks. We can verify that mm -hmm. this is going to happen every time on time, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? There, it's predictable. Um, now, you you was giving the vision of working with different correctional facilities, doing a seminar, maybe an hour or two, sitting down with prisoners, teaching them how they can best use Bitcoin to help them uh, prep for once they return back home and they can you know, call family members, loved ones and relay that information so they can start up that nest egg while they're in prison. So when they get out, they already have something to work with. So from there, you had this wild idea and i'd like for you to talk about a little bit bitcoin companies pipeline creating a pipeline between prisons to bitcoin companies yeah that that's bold it's bold what does that look like <laughs> i mean so it looks like this man like so um i know that there i know that like i have educational courses i know um you know some other organizations out there I know one in particular with Ms. Kimberly Booker, uh, BTC Impact. Uh, they're looking to work with, you know, guys and women and women who are returned citizens. But the thing is, it's like you go through an education. Like, I'm not going to say you're going to be able to get all of that in. I'm not going to say you can or you can't. It'll be a process to get it all into one prison. But essentially where you would lead the breadcrumbs to say, hey, you could come here, learn through us, learn by us. Because um, put a side note there. Every time I'm on Twitter, I see people saying we need people to work in Bitcoin. We need more folks to work in Bitcoin. And the pro and the situation is this: people who've been who have like a thousand percent return or better are not looking to work in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People who can buy yeah. a lot of Bitcoin at once are not looking to work in Bitcoin. Yeah, right. So you're going right and then you're going to have the same attitude with uh, folks who who are in Bitcoin already. So you have a situation where number one, so the education or the training is this, like what is needed to work at a Bitcoin company? I, I saw Bitcoin magazine put, hell, you just need to be a Bitcoin. Well, if that's the case, hell, we can make that. We have about what, 135,000 people in black Bitcoin billionaires now. We educate on a daily basis. So, I mean, it's, um, it's to the point where, you know, the education starts in prison. Then you go through um, a pipeline of training it says, hey, I'm qualified in this area here. Boom, 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 boom. What company would love to hire them? You know, then on top of that, you have a different hunger in mind. Like you have never mm -hmm. seen, Bitcoin companies would have never seen anything like someone who's given a chance to work at a Bitcoin company just off the fact of how much knowledge they put in. Um, mm -hmm. And <clears throat> coupled with that, but, like but I was from the company's perspective, um, mm -hmm. why should they invest in a returned citizen, a person who went to prison. Okay, so because... again, like I like to say, hunger. Um, eagerness to work, bottom line. Uh, bottom line being increased, number one on that level. Number two, I can't stress enough having, you have, you have, you have a, a pool of people to choose from, all right? You will have trusted people that, you know, a lot of these companies trust to facilitate this educational process in a way that could be beneficial for them. Um, number three, 
as I read here in this Harvard Political Review article written by Liz Benici, one of the things she said, uh, you know, to reduce recidivism with current jobs, or you give, you know, folks jobs that they can actually be a part of, you pay less taxes on prisoners. You know, you mm. pay less taxes on inmates. Um, mm. And then overall, it's a great look. I mean, am I saying that someone could be head of blockchain development? Probably. You know, I'm not going to say not. However, the one companies will have something to look for. It's like, all right, what can we put together around this idea? You know, where can we fit this in? Because if people are not looking to work, but you have almost, what, 600,000 people released, at least 100,000 of those people might want to work on Bitcoin to correct knowledge. That's the exact point I was going to make. They, they don't care about where you come from your educational history. Mm -hmm. I know there's people who dropped out of college, uh, who only went to high school, but learned Bitcoin and actually on the technical basis, on, on a technical level, and now mm -hmm. are Bitcoin core contributors. Right. It's, a, it's like the Bitcoin is an asymmetric uh, type of People asset. don't like care. As long as you have the information, you have the skills, and people like you who go and give them that information, give them the skills, if mm -hmm. you if you know what you're talking about, you know, you know, working on the Lightning Network, right? L working on a Lightning Development Kit or working on directly on Bitcoin Core. Like the we need all the help that mm -hmm. we can get. And most of this information is not even being taught in traditional institutions anyway, right? Exactly. <laughs> Those classes are just starting to come Pop up. up. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. people how the people who are working on the lightning uh on the lightning network right now, they didn't take a course. In that they didn't take they had to learn it from right. going to github and, right. um, and fidgeting around right so anybody those people who are now in those positions uh who are working on it they will understand somebody who didn't previously have mm -hmm. a background because yeah and then check this out like here's another thing i know some companies gonna be like well you know they're gonna be antsy a little bit they're going mm -hmm. oh man i don't know about all this and third but see here's the thing if someone is coming to you and they've gone mm -hmm. through that process, that's a little bit of like, you know, psychology within the company's mind to get over. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to kick it. You could try to play the old game the way it's been played, and you will have no one working. And then you just have a lot of people subcontracting you out to death. Or mm -hmm. you can actually deal with the ingenuity. Like, I have a lot of companies say, we love what you're doing, this, that, and third, right? Then I have a lot of people say that, you know, they can see the brilliance. I'm not the only one, you know, I'm not the only one. So you would then be, you know, adding to your company, a different type of culture, a different type of attitude, because the only one, only the best one step up to the plate. You know what I mean? We're at a point right now where the best ones who are probably slept on or diamonds in the rough, whatever, those are the ones that step up to the plate. They want to show the world what they can do. You know, I wanted to leave prison. I wanted to go to Harvard. I found Bitcoin. It was much harder. You know, people want people want to go do that. And so, you know, deny that type of brain opportunity is doing you bigger damage than anything else. Um, I have a I have a guy right now, like he's a friend of mine, just educating him on Bitcoin. And he's he came out of prison a year ago. You know, he buys Bitcoins out there. He looks at other investments too, but it's like, all right, now the mind is open. You know what I mean? I have uh, I have a lot of friends who I just introduced the concept to, and then you watch things marinate. So now, if you now before then it was like, all right, I really didn't know how to educate to teach, you know, on that level years ago. But it it gets better and better over time. But so now you you might even have a guy come over prison once again to tech stuff. Like what I learned from reading like guys like Tony Buzan and Jim Quick who are like memory and learning experts things happen in the brain and I knew that my brain and my experience have been somewhere totally different than most people were writing on. So now you have a different accelerator. It's just it's just all the the, the great things you hear about folks who intelligently come home from prison, you add that to a Bitcoin company or to the Bitcoin network or a core or whatever. And the principles is what the principles of what Bitcoin is and the freedom is what to keep a lot make a lot of, ah, it would keep a lot of guys Bitcoin nerds. Because once you show them that what how rug pulls uh, happen, and now their money is just slipping away, 
the freedom will keep mm. him more than anything. There's the opportunity, man. The, the opportunity is bright. It's open for you in particular, but also the people who you serve um, because there's not a program that exists like that. And I think mm -hmm. it's absolutely tailored to the people who are in these communities who do, don't have a traditional background and finance is like, well, great. A lot of Bitcoiners today didn't have a traditional background in finance, right? People because who admitted really anything, have to start they have from no scratch. background. Elon yeah. Musk didn't have no background in going to Mars. <laughs> I mean, Unless man, he's an alien. He's like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, back. nobody had, nobody, man. That's my when Bezos started Amazon, he had no background what he's doing today. Mm -hmm. He had to build that knowledge. He had to build it. Build it. Yeah. Yeah. Build it. Man, I, I'm super excited for you. Um, and let me know any way that that I can help. Now, I, you know, I haven't personally experienced, but man, I'll sit down. I have my PowerPoint, and I <laughs> hey. my little laser pointer, and I'll go through it. That's that's the least I can do, man. Like for sure. Hey, it's all good, so, man. All hands on deck. Whoever wants it can get it, man. Yeah. Before we leave, uh, let people know where they can first find the book and then get connected with you, social media and any other you know stuff. What? That you're doing. I got you. I should have said this earlier. Uh, yeah. For the book, it's called From Bars to Bitcoin.com. Uh, you want to check that out. Great website, From Bars to Bitcoin.com. Uh, right about now, probably best to buy from Amazon because I don't have any on deck. Um, so go ahead and send it in. You can get it from Bars to Bitcoin and still buy from Amazon from that website. Um, for all my noobs out there, you know, for everybody who is very patient to listen to this, I am actually doing a great, great uh, deal. Right about now, I'm dropping my new mastermind and my very first mastermind group with this woman named Sabrina Abraham. She hit me up. Fast forward, they subtupled their investment. So the knowledge I provided them was able, were able to make them a part of it, having diamond hands in the Bitcoin. So um, that right there is I'm, I'm running it for the next few months. It's 10 slots. We only have three available and four people on the backlog. So reach out to me on Instagram, Bitcoin Vegan Justin, uh, Twitter, Bitcoin underscore vegan, or even on Clubhouse and just send me Mastermind. And I'll provide you some great info on it and see if this is something you want to do. Um, but yeah, that's where everybody can find me, man. From bars to Bitcoin.com. Follow me on IG, Bitcoin Vegan Justin, Twitter, Bitcoin underscore vegan, or Clubhouse Justin Redrick. And if you're interested in that mastermind, just shout out mastermind. Hey, hey, man, I'm absolutely excited for you. I'm happy. Every time we talk, there's a new project, there's a new yes, rollout, sir. and it's continuing to build. It's always on to the next. I love the energy. I, I love the, the mama mentality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you it's always, you always really. got to keep going. For sure. So I, I thank you for being you, man. No problem, brother. Peace, peace.